Hey folks, welcome back to the Dormouse's Desk. I am said Dormouse, this is my desk. Um, everything outside of the frame is a complete mess, but that's okay, because today we're talking about what we've already inked. Um, so this is, what month is this? This is August. Can you believe it's already August? There's cat hair in my clean water. Had that happen, gross, okay. <laughs> It's, it's been a time. It has been a month. Um, for sure. But I do have some exciting things to share with you all. Um, some new pens that I got in. Yay! New pens. And then, as I mentioned last month, August is orange August. So not all of my inks are orange, but, uh, yeah, most of them are. <laughs> Not that I have a bunch of uh, pens inked, because, you know, I can't. your girl can't do that. She can't be inking all of her pens. She's tried it. It's happened before. But it was a... Uh, it was a time. It was... It was a lot. <laughs> it's, it's fun inking all of your pens. I enjoyed it. But also, it was very overwhelming. Because then you just... You have too many options. So, anyway, let, let us move on. Let us begin the inking. It's a little messy. Uh, since I have this pen in my hand, I figure we'll just go ahead and start with it. This is a Caveco Sport. This color is Fox. I really dig this color. Um, I will say that I don't... There's a, there's a reason why I've moved away from the Plastic Body Sports. Um, I feel like this one has some wiggle in the cap. Which is really, it's not anything, but it just sort of annoys me. Uh, it's like a first world problem. It, it, it affects nothing other than it just wiggles around a little bit and that bothers me. <sighs> but that's all. That's all. Yeah, so this is a... Caveco Sport... Fox is the color name, and this used to have a fine nib in it, but the fine with this ink was way too fine. So I swapped it for a medium nib. The Plastic Body Sports, the, just so you know, in case you don't, because I didn't at first and I tried really hard, not this pen, but other, other Caveco Sports that I've had, I really tried to get the nib housing out of there. It doesn't come out. It's glued in. Okay? <laughs> it's it's in there. So to swap nibs, you have to pull the nib and feed. Okay. <laughs> so don't try to unscrew it, because it's not going to happen. So this is a medium. Um, the All Sports have an unscrewable uh, unit. Like, you can unscrew the whole unit, but not the plastic ones. So this is... Earl Grey Tea. The ink has a uh, really nice shading on it, um, and I've been, I've been enjoying using it. It feels a little bit dry coming out of this nib, and I floss the tines um, just to make sure, but it still feels a little bit on the drier side. It's not dry, it's just on the drier side, um, but it is also an orange ink, so, you know, there's that. <laughs> 
But yeah, if you if you want uh, this to be super juicy, stick it in um, a pen that is known to be super juicy for you. I've not used this pen a lot, and I'm I'm honestly not sure if I've used that nib and feed before. I think I've swapped it out of something else because I wanted like a broad or a double broad and something else. <clears throat> so that's a thing. <laughs> everywhere today. I don't know where I am, but I'm not here. Uh, but yeah, in this particular pen, it feels to be on the drier side. I would like for it to be a little bit juicier, as I like all of my pens to be on the juicier side, but if you prefer a um, dry to medium wet ink, I think that's, that's a good one. And this color is awesome. I mean, yeah, this color is freaking awesome. Alright, as I can tell, this is going to be a messy looking month. you, Casey. <laughs> should, I should put a heart. You know, normally I would use a, a straight edge to make these lines, but um, we're freewheeling it today. We're just going for things. Okay, next pen. Uh, if you watched the first video this month, you'll you'll know. Um, so I won't say too much about it, except for how I how I feel about the combination now. But this is my um, vintage from the '90s, if you want to call something from the '90s vintage, as far as I know. Pilot Capless um, pen. And This has faceted, facets. And of course, I love this pen. <laughs> I really do. Um, I still have no idea what this material is, if it is really plastic or not. And it could be, and that's fine with me. Uh, but the pen itself is, is a really nice writer. It's just, you know, it has the normal pilot nib that's very easy to deal with. I mean, it feels super smooth. It's like super smooth. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it for that reason. Um, yeah, the clickiness is great for note taking. You need to write something down in a hurry. You click the back end. Don't have to worry about unscrewing a thing. That's great. What's not to like about that? And like I said in the the first video, I really prefer the way the cap is. Cap. The cap. There's no cap. It's capless. The, the way the clip is here, it's very like smooth. There's no weld points on here. Uh, it just, it's a more comfortable, if, if you've, if you've uh, not tried a vanishing point because you're afraid the clip is gonna get in your way, consider one of the vintage ones because the clip is very different. Look, y'all, there's a reason this is such a popular color. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Mm. 
This ink moves really nicely in water. That one I had to coax out. This one just sort of went with the flow. Nice. Okay, next. This is a Sailor Pro Gear Old Fashioned. It has like a little red dot on the top for like the cherry and the old fashioned. I'm not sure what's green in an old fashioned, but. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> I really love this pen. Uh, the Pro Gear fits in my hand really nicely. The Pro Gear Slim is a little bit on the slim side <laughs> of what's comfortable in my hand. Um, so this is another orange ink. And this is actually a medium red. What ink is it? Oh, here, here. This is wearing gold. K Y O N G H U I. Oh, I got it right. I really dig this combination. This is um, an orange, more on the yellow side. Then, like, on the red side with, like, Earl Grey. And none of my oranges this month are, are orange. They're more like burnt oranges, orangey browns. Like a yucky, yucky oranges, but they're raspberries. Don't tell anyone. No issues with flow with this one. This one feels great out of this pen. I really dig this combination. Um, I would definitely consider buying a bottle of this. Um, as far as like the, the Earl Grey above, I need to put that in a different pen because it might just be too dry for my taste. So if you saw uh, my Instagram posts, you may have seen this pen. Um, this is a Leonardo Memento Zero in Forest of Umbra. And the um, resin material is one done by Mackenzie Penworks, who actually is like local to me. He's in town, <laughs> um, and he does a lot of work with diamond cast um, materials, so there are little like, specks of, of diamond in this. This is not my only diamond cast um, pen. I have two others, I believe, but yeah, I saw this and I needed to buy it. And on the back, uh, this is a gold spot exclusive, by the way, on the back. Um, there's, you know, it says Leonardo for gold spot and then the pen number. They only made 150 of these. And then there's a little tree. No idea if you can see that little tree, but there's a little tree and it's so cute. Um, yeah, so when I got this, and I have the, I have the box here actually. This is going to be a long video because I want to hang out with you all. <laughs> 
this face. The box is uh, really nice. It has a, a very sort of strange texture to it. Let's see the texture. And this really beautiful picture of a, of a tree. I mean, that's a little bit out of focus, but I'm showing this to you for a reason, for something that I'm going to show you later on. And so you open it up, and <clears throat> it has like a slipcase on the outside, which you could choose to keep on. Um, and then there's another box, and there's an inner box, and you open that up, and you get your guarantee card, and um, this little clippy case. And you know, it's says Leonardo and this thing hangs off the pen or whatever. Um, there, no, like, um, no ink cartridges or anything in <laughs> here is, which, I, this may, may be like one of the first, um, cartridge converter pens that I've ever gotten that didn't have a cartridge, like a starter cartridge in it, which I'm fine with because I never use them anyway, but I was just like, oh, that's, that's different. So anyway, um, I didn't film an unboxing of this pen, um, but I did want to. I did want to share with you the packaging of it. Um, this is not, by any means, a first impression of this pen. Um, let me say um one more time. Um, So this is the pen, this is the pen uncapped, and this is the pen on drugs. Um, <laughs> just kidding. It has a, a, a black nib, this is a medium nib, and uh, let me just, let me just write it up, y'all. Write it up for you. is Mont Blanc Irish Green. Anyone know if the Irish and the Italians get along? <laughs> they do in this pen really well. Um, if they don't in real life, uh, I'm pretending with this pen. This nib though is really wonderful. And I, I, I know it's just like a medium nib, but it is really, really well tuned. And I was, I was a little bit hesitant, hesitant about it when I bought it because I know coated nibs can be different. Uh, but this one is really great. It, it just writes really beautifully. Paper feels like it's behaving a little bit strangely here. I wonder if I touched it. And I got this sample also from Casey. Uh, yeah, so the, the ink matches fairly well. But I think next time I ink this, I'm probably going to go with something more of like a coppery or a brown color. Um, or um, something a little bit moodier, like... Um, Brothers Grimm or uh, Monarca Nopal. 
something like that because this is just I mean it's a good combination <laughs> but uh, I, I think just this this color might be a little bit too bright for me for this pen <laughs> do you need any more qualifications I don't know Okay, uh, what is next? I have two pens left. I'm going to start with this one. This is a Pelican M400 in brown torty. And it wasn't until recently that I realized that the cap and the piston knob are not black. Literally, I learned this two days ago and I've had this pen since November. Like, I assumed in photos when I bought it that it was, it was, um, brown, like a dark brown. This is my, well, no idea if this makes this any better for you. <laughs> but it is uh, a super, super dark brown. I didn't realize it until I, I shone my phone directly on it. So I'm like, ooh, that makes me like the pen even more. <laughs> but yeah, I feel a little bit like an idiot now. But that's okay. Um, this is a medium nib. This nib has some issues with um, side strokes, but we'll forgive it. We'll forgive it. And this is can't go a month without a Kobe ink, I guess. Uh, this is a really pretty ink color. See how light that side stroke is? Oh, it's annoying me. Like, it doesn't feel bad, and it doesn't click or anything. I've looked at the nib under a, a loop, and everything looks normal. Um, but my, my loop is pretty crappy, and... What do I know? But it doesn't feel right. I would love for it to be wetter. So it might need to make a trip to the nib grinder. Uh, but I'm going to put another ink in there, something like super wet, just just to make sure that I'm not I'm not crazy. But you know, I assume that Kobe inks, like all of them, have like been like a pretty perfect, like perfectly lubricated. I've not had any dry feeling ones, which makes me wonder if it's the pen. And the last ink I had it had in it was um, the Graf Von Faber Castell Cognac Brown. So yeah, actually, in swatching, in swatching this, this ink feels a little bit dry. So. Maybe it's not the nib. Maybe it's the ink. I didn't leave enough room here. Okay. But the color is really nice. I like the color. Alright, next pen is the Bennu Euphoria in Bourbon. This is my first Bennu, so I'm really excited about it. I've been wanting this pen for well over a year, probably closer to two years. Actually, actually, yeah, I remember being at the uh, Triangle Pen Show the year before last and asking... Um, Shoot, what's his name that runs the Orlando Pen Show? Because he had a bunch of bangers on his table. Jim? Tom? I think it's Jim. 
excuse me, I don't remember. Um, I asked him if he had this one, and he's like, nope. <laughs> I was like, crap, all right, well, not, not, not meant to be. Uh, so, yeah. Before we can, eh, no, yeah, we'll, we'll do this first. Um, and then this will give us a chance to let things dry. So this is a Bennu, not a Twisby. Bourbon, this is a fine rib. This is sort of on the scratchier side. So I don't know if I got a crap nib or what, but uh, I'll have to futz with this one too. And the ink is Colorverse Alpha Taurus. It's actually T A U, not T A U R. But I'm an idiot, so I put an R. I'm in a weird mood today, guys. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so so just weird. But um, that's that's today. That is how we're feeling today. But I did want to play with ink, and I wanted to hang out with you guys, and so I really do apologize if I'm a little off-putting today. I don't mean to be. Um, so this is the bottom. This is my favorite ink of the whole second round of these Constellation series inks. Um, because I think it's like one of the most legible ones, and I also just really enjoy the color. Ooh, that's a lot of ink. You spread yourself out. Don't make me do the work for you. So yeah, let me um, let me just let me make this commentary. Ooh, that looks so cool the way it's like pooling, like some sort of um, dried cactus. What are those sticks called? Brain's not working today either. Fun. Okay. This is the box that uh, I believe all Benos come in. They don't. I don't think they. Um, I don't think they make other boxes for their pens. This is like basically it. And this is nothing about the pen. This is purely a, a packaging issue. Um, so you take the top off and you have this cute little envelope that the pen comes in. It's very nice. And then you get a um, cartridge where the end looks like it's been in a fight with something. It, <laughs> it really looks like it's melted on. Okay, but whatever. Nobody uses those anyway. Um, and then you get your product warranty and care guide. Good. Love it. And then you get trash at the bottom of the box. What is this? <laughs> like what what is this? It seems to me Um, and I'm, I'm not sure that I've heard anybody else um, mention this, but it seems to me that if you have this folded up in there, which it is, um, and it's it's a fairly thick piece of paper in its own right, right, and you have the pen in this envelope here, which 
also on its own offers a decent amount of protection. Let me stick it in the box. Like there's not a lot going on in there that that I think could damage the pen. Right? You've got some cushion here from the instructions. So what is this supposed to do? Let me stick that in there. <laughs> like does that does that extra amount of of paper shredded paper in there really keep this from rattling around that much? I don't think it does. I've seen other Benu unboxings where they've like opened it up and whatnot. Um, and, you know, my pen is not in the minority here to have, to have this stuff in it. <laughs> Nobody seems to care about it. I just don't understand why it's there. I don't think it needs to be there at all. It would be such a nice presentation, like, if it weren't there at all. Am I alone? <laughs> Am I crazy? Am I nitpicking something that really doesn't matter? Like, there are fires in Maui, and I'm complaining about, you know, uh, Bennu adding shredded paper in the bottom of a box. Like, I get it. I get how insignificant it is, but just, like, if you're thinking about the packaging in such nice ways. Like, this is a, this is a nice way to present a pen on the inexpensive side, right? You're not building, like, a plastic box that has, like, 10 million, like, outer outer envelopes to it that are like full bleed printed you know this is just like a basic simple presentation and i like this this is nice this i think um takes away from it you know <laughs> like if, if you wanted to just print this on an even thicker paper and that way when you accordion fold it like this you get like even more bounce up to the top of the box so that the the pen itself doesn't rattle around as much. That's all. <laughs> That's all. So I'm not I'm not sure why why Benu did that and um, I could just be like a crazy person. But um, yeah I saw that and I was just like I don't get it. Like, my why? Okay, enough of that rant. <laughs> yeah, so I think my favorite orange this time around was Alpha Taurus. I really liked how legible it was. Not that any of the other ones were illegible, but in um, large portions of, of notes, it's easier to, to pick out words from um, like a bunch of text. Not that any of these were illegible this time around. These all performed fairly well. Like I said, Earl Grey Chi was um, a little bit on the drier side. Not dry, but on the drier side. Kanpeki, always great. Pilot Pen, always great. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's a great combination. Nothing wrong with that. Perfect. Um, this one, really beautiful color there's a little bit of oh so i should tell you earl gray tea has a little bit of red sheen in heavy spots kanpeki has a little bit of this like magenta e purple sheen uh on the heavy spots the Waringal has a red orange sheen in the heavy spots and uh, that actually sheens more than either the two of those. Nothing but uh, good old shading with Irish green. And this was a great combination too, as far as how the ink felt out of the pen. Throughout the whole page, I felt like there was um, plenty of good flow. So, you know how sometimes when you write, as you get to the middle and to the bottom of the page, um, the flow through the nib and feed sort of like starts to dry up because it can't keep up with how fast you're writing. 
uh, this I'm not having that issue with at all. It happens after several pages of writing. <laughs> and I write kind of quickly, as you can see. I don't take my time when I write. I write pretty quickly, and so... Um, yeah, it's a little uh, issue of my own, but anyway. Um, it, it keeps up rather well. There's there's no shading or, or there's no sheen to that one. The amber, uh, no sheen, but it has a, a little bit of nice shading to it. Again, issues with that nib, I think. So, if, <laughs> if it's not my favorite to write with this month, <laughs> mm -hmm. but this one was really great. Um, Colorless Taurus. It has this dark. I want to call it a black sheen to it. I think it's black. It's so dark. Uh, and I sort of wish I, I left more room. This is why you portion out your sections before you start swatching, so you don't run out of room. We're flying by the seat of our pants today because we're exciting people. Uh, That was a good one. That was a good one. Here is the back of the page. You can see that some of them uh, bled through more than others. And I should let you know that the paper is 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. And I think it's like the old style Tomoe River paper. So uh, it will bleed through. <laughs> My personal preference is, what is it, the 68 GSM Tomoe River paper, something a little bit thicker to like prevent situations like this so you can write on the back. But this particular paper does not, so I would not take the bleed through um, as a, a negative indication of the ink performance. And my con is. Like you can you can you can see everything like through this page. This is the back side of the next page and you can see what's on it. So this is not like the greatest example of how inks perform on on Tomoe River paper because it's just, I don't know, I mean, maybe it is like a, a good example of how it performs in Tomoe River paper, but this, I wouldn't choose to write on the back of this because it's so thin. It's like writing on the back of airmail paper. You just kind of, you don't, you don't do it. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Okay, so this was my August. I can't wait for um, whatever the next month is, September. I am going on vacation next month. So I don't know what the video situation is gonna be, but I'm kinda gonna, I'm gonna try to get something up for you guys. And then, what, what is the ink, what is the ink thing gonna be? I don't know, I think it might be a lot of black ink. It might be a lot of blue ink. I don't know. I, I, haven't, I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. So if you have any suggestions on um, a theme for next month, let me know in the comments down below. Love y'all's faces. I'll see you next time. Bye.